Welcome to Mastering and Guideline in Ultrasound and Echo. Hi everyone. In this le uh, lecture, I'm going to give you uh, some uh, tips about uh, capturing the uh, highest velocity in patient that they are suspicious. How come hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy? Even thought I uh, had many lecture about the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, but still I noticed uh, some techs uh, and members has some uh, issue about the performing correctly Varsalva manu maneuver. As you know, one of the most uh, common uh, indication for echocardiography is pre-syncope or uh, syncope and uh, those patients, they have uh, sometimes lightheadedness, and at the top of those, a cardiogenic uh, reason for that uh, problem is any obstruction in outflow of the left ventricle that at top of them is aortic stenosis, and after that, we have HOCOM or hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, HOCM. CM. And uh, when we scan those patients, whenever we see any hypertrophy, it can be symmetric or asymmetric, uh, like this, symmetric apical or just a septal, or sometimes even we have prominent sigmoid. So in those cases, and in uh, that indication for the patient is uh, presuncube or even is not, when we see this pattern in 2D or we see any aliasing in the left ventricle, when we put color, for example, on this case, you can see we have aliasing and turbulence at the level of the LVOT and a little above that, or we do a sample on the LVOT and velocity goes over 1.5, we have to always think about the HOCOM. So any of those situation, we need to do Valsalva. Now let's see how we do Valsalva maneuver. The first step for uh, performing Valsalva maneuver is investigating the location of obstruction. We, for that purpose, we have two options, and we have to do both of them. First, color Doppler. On color Doppler, we can see where is turbulence, uh, but it's not very accurate. S only we see where we have turbulence from the tip of the apex to the LVOT. For example, on this case, we can see turbulence is here, but still we don't know exactly where is the maximum and highest obstruction even based on the 2d we can see at this level we have obstruction and turbulence correspond with that but for uh, prefer, uh, for confirming we have to do parse doppler and walking through what does it mean walking through we have to do parse doppler especially when we have concentric hypertrophy from the apex to the lvot sample volume we put uh, at this different level, first uh, sample volume at this, and I require it. Then we go a little lower, then that the mid, and the finally at the basal, and finally at the LVOT. So it's better, <coughs> sorry, we have to do in the four to five step and location and find where is our highest velocity, as you can see here. At this level, we have higher velocity close to the two. When we found it, based on the direction of turbulence and location, then uh, we can go performing uh, Valsalva. Before that, we have to remember and uh, that we have, when you uh, do scanning and you do color Doppler, always understand the mechanism of the turbulence. Even though is not uh, very common, is uncommon, sometimes we have diastolic intracardiac obstruction. For example, on this case, you can see it looks like uh, on the 2D we have an every small akinetic apex, but whenever you see something like that, always you have to do a contrast study and make sure we don't have thrombosis, aneurysm, or 
apical hypertrophy as you can see here obstructive apical hypertrophy and not only that one uh, we can see this color turbulence on when you color put it color on that level we have turbulence at this level the nose is very clear but there is very interesting case that this patient has diastolic intracardiac in, uh, pressure increasing how we know it with the color correspond with the EKG or we do Doppler we can see this is diastolic and dagger shape is reverse dagger shape that with I talk about this in another lecture apical hypertrophic obstructive you can check it out but always when you do color and 2D understand what is going on in that uh, level and what is the entity and pathophysiology of uh, that uh, finding this is first step so walking through the LV different level find the highest velocity because later we are going to do Valsalva at that specific spot that we acquired and record highest velocity without uh, Valsalva with Valsalva most of the time almost always the highest velocity we get it at that specific spot that we did on the pulse wave Doppler. The first step for performing Valsalva maneuver is practicing uh, Valsalva bef before we recording. We ask the patient bear down and make his or her belly tight like the timing uh, they go to the bathroom for emptying their bowel. They, when we say that one, they know what we are talking about. Some center for make confirming and making sure that per patient do Valsalva maneuver, they use a barometer or a sphangometer and they connected a syringe or any device and they ask uh, the patient blow out through that and increase the uh, sphangometer pressure around 40 millimercury and keep it for that level for 10 seconds so we do it while solve a maneuver for 10 seconds most patients they can do this for this time so first we practice and make sure patient perform correctly and second we during this practice we fix our image because with Valsalva the heart and the view apical 5 and apical 3 many times change so with this practicing we tell the patient this first practicing we see how we have, what maneuver we have to do to fixing our image during recording second during that we have to check it mitral valve regurgitation in relaxing and with Valsalva practice see what mechanism we have MR if it's in both in relaxing and Valsalva we have MR or not what is the severity and the shape and mechanism of the MR because if the patient has MR in any stage we have to differentiate it MR jet from the LVOT or intracardiac jet because they are at the same time of the systolic and the same almost direction when we put cursor so this our basic uh, practice and evaluation for those spot and our view after we find out our uh, correct maneuver and location and mechanism of the obstruction and MR we go start doing uh, performing uh, one maneuver or solve a maneuver and recording after practicing and correcting view and we find out what maneuver we have to fix our view we start recording for the wall solver in that case when we found it correct way view and uh, we notice where is the spot we put generally the sign the cursor at the level of the obstruction parallel to the jet or turbulence and this case the best way is this one so we have to fix it we cannot put, change the cursor uh, direction on the uh, continuous we have to do maneuver that uh, bring the our jet and cursor parallel to that region of obstruction that will be here so 
this one is much better we have to try for that purpose we have to go a little more um, lateral and bring it lvot and the jet parallel to the cursor so we move it our probe here then we put it cursor then in that case start asking the patient do uh, valsalva maneuver and we hit it continuous way in the correct uh, and uh, correct valsalva maneuver the pressure on the our uh, continuous way it increase little by little go to the maximum sometimes we lose it during Varsalo maneuver because we lost we lost the view for that purpose just we have to know what maneuver do and finding a little more anterior or posterior mean tip of the probe up or down toward the roof or toward gently and see where is the velocity increased if we catch it this one we can uh, capture this one if during the Varsalva we lost it peak doesn't matter is is uh, if we maneuver fixed our doppler and increased we capture that one too but right away when we capture increasing velocity we increased uh, sweep speed from 25 to 50 to 100 or 75 we captured three big uh, doppler on that level two or three uh, Doppler is enough uh, Doppler spectral Doppler of the that region and the specific pattern for that will be dagger shape always uh, for that is the most important feature that can be differentiated if is the patient if the patient had MR with this pattern we know this is not MR and beside of the peak velocity and the shape of the MR but the dagger shape is the most important shape so when we capture it increasing with the low sweep speed 25 millimeter per uh, meter per second we after capturing that one we increase sweep speed right at the end of this level and we record it two or three pulse with the uh, sweep speed around 75 to 100 and that is very important that we can show that is belong to that uh, intracardiac or uh, belong to the MR it is critical sometimes it's very hard to capture it with the increasing velocity during Varsalva that's fine when you capture a little of this with the low sweep speed we can do again and uh, correct our image and our sample volume in different direction the, our cursor uh, we have to practice in different direction is exactly like the uh, aortic stenosis even we see turbulence but we are not sure the direction of the jet which way is that for that purpose with increasing sweep speed around 70 to 100 and with maneuver we put our cursor in different direction and see which one has we acquire each of them and which one has highest velocity so one is in the continuous in low velocity low sweep speed and the others two or three in the high uh, sweep speed and with the maneuver putting our cursor in different level and different direction until we catch it the highest velocity with our solver maneuver so in uh, final point is that we in apical five in an, an apical tree we have to do different uh, and many war solver maneuver at least three to five times and different direction our cursor that we know we sweep it and survey all possible direction of the jet in that case we never miss high highest velocity with the valsalva if we do just only one cursor uh, with valsalva 100 percent most of the time we can miss the increasing velocity inside of the heart we repeated the same maneuver 
in the apical tree. Sometimes in apical 5, we cannot get it very high velocity, but in apical 3, we can catch it and record it that high velocity or vice versa. So we have to do exactly the same maneuver, the same principle that we use in the aortic stenosis. We use it for uh, intracardiac obstruction with the Valsalva maneuver. For uh, performing correctly in different machine is a little different. In the EPIC machine, with update, pressing update, it goes to the live. When we move the, our cursor, it right away it show a Doppler, and we can see. Okay, if we move it slowly, slowly, and we we can see the changes on the Doppler. But on the G machine, unfortunately, we cannot. When we move the cursor, we cannot see Doppler. So we have to one time move it and. Uh, uh, wait for the Doppler at that level, then we do it another uh, another clip with moving our cursor in different uh, orientation, then capture it. So we have to repeat it many times in different direction until we find out where is the our highest velocity with the Varsalva maneuver. For more detail on those all different type of the hypertrophy cardiomyopathy and uh, obstruction, you can check it out the playlist and uh, check them out. Uh, there are uh, three or four uh, clips in these uh, topics. Up to the next time. Have a wonderful time.